Okay, good. So, Jeff, let's just get to it. All right. Before my kids wake up and screw this whole thing up. <laughs> you, have, you have two kids. You, well, first of all, you're an attorney. I am an attorney. Yeah, 20, I lose, I lose count, 25 years. In what state? Louisiana, Northwest Louisiana. So you were an attorney, your oldest child is 19. So you were an attorney for six years before you had your first child. Yes. Um, my wife and I had our first child. I'm trying to remember, but you know, we were in our early to mid thirties. Um, and yeah, I mean, I kind of had always said I wanted to work a little bit before I got married. And so I was able to do that. And you have a 19 year old and a 17 year old. Right. My son is a sophomore in college at Louisiana Tech University in Ruston. He's 19 and my daughter is 17. She is a high school senior. Okay. So this show, this short and sweet and show full of wisdom has two basic questions for you. And I'm going to start with the first one. What's the difference between raising a man child and a woman child? You have a boy and a girl. I only have boys. What are the biases yeah. you bring? What are the differences? What are the challenges? What are the hurdles? You had right. your boy first. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's definitely different. I, uh, I know it's probably not politically correct, but, you know, as my son grew up, there were things I let him do that I'm more cautious about my daughter doing, particularly just because women are preyed on uh, in a variety of ways that maybe men or boys are not, um, or maybe that's the stereotype, but you know, uh, we're on I-20 and I-20 is a huge sex trafficking um, corridor, uh, the trucking industry. Um, I-20, I believe, runs from California all the way to the East Coast. Um, and so having a daughter, I just, you know, there are things that, you know, I am more cautious with her about than maybe I was with my son. The, the, the tendency is you're more cautious with your first child, right? I mean, you have this child and, and it's like you don't want them to bump their head. You don't want them to do this. You, you play helicopter a lot more with the first child, I, I think. Uh, so she got some free reign that he didn't get because she was the second child. But there's, you know, I think in, in our world, especially as crazy and depraved as our world continues to get, I think as a parent, there's, there's somewhat different fears uh, of, of protecting your, your male child versus your female child. Um, give, me, give me an example. So we, did your son have a later curfew because he was a boy, but yet your daughter, since she was the second child, was allowed to tra traverse the stairs by herself, whereas your son you may have protected because he was your first child? Yeah, so a little bit of that. I think it's more, you know, um, we keep tabs on her when she's moving around town on her own more. You know, I, I didn't used to worry as much when he would, when he started driving and he was going places. Um, for example, she goes to a gym every night. She texts us, I'm leaving the gym and then I'm in my car, you know, because she's at this gym by herself. Uh, she walk and typically it, it's, it's dark when she leaves because she works out in the evening. And so, you know, it's just, uh, I, I, if, if you ask what my parenting style is, is I'm, I'm not a helicopter parent, but I'm a realist. I, I, I know I, I'm not ignorant or uh, oblivious to what's going on in the world. Um, and so, you know, um, and I'm in Shreveport, Louisiana, and we have carjackings and, you know, just like every other city. So, you know, um, so I just would say that, you know, even if it's not a popular thing to say, I, I tend to lord over and protect my daughter from certain things in the world more than I did my son. Sorry, I muted myself. So you're more protective over your daughter. You see the world as um, being a more hostile place for women, maybe even? 
Uh, it can be, I think, because I think because or different, or I guess different. I guess different. I guess men have to worry about other men picking fights with them. Women have to worry about men being basically predators towards them. That's the thing to me. I mean, most predators are most predator type situations and violent crimes are instigated by men involving men. And, and, you know, I mean, even with my wife, when she goes walking uh, at night or working out and she likes to walk a lot, you know, I mean, we, you see it on the news every day, a full grown woman getting abducted while she was out doing something, whether she was exercising or in a, in a parking lot. So um, I think that, that the bad apples that are out there looking to prey on people tend to prey on women. And it's just, I, I think that, I think that's a fact of life. And so I have to take that into account when I have my daughter, I think is beautiful. She's a blonde 17 year old, beautiful girl. Uh, and I don't, you know, I don't want anybody bothering her. So, um, I I'm going to do what I need to do to, to watch, to watch that. It's so funny. So I have a pair of three-year-olds and a five-year-old and I thought the conversation was going to be like, well, my daughter got out of diapers sooner and we let her do, uh, you know, I thought it was going to be the things that were around what I'm talking about. And all of a sudden you throw me into the fire of, of, of real life teenager stuff. Well, I see, that's the thing. It's hard to, to, that's the stage I've been in for say the last five years. Right. And so, you know, it, it, when people will tell you as your kids get older, certain things become easier and certain things become harder. It's just different issues to deal with, right? I mean, you know, you're dealing with turning your kids into good human beings and giving them a great foundation. By the time our kids are driving, I'm worried about them driving, you know, uh, being responsible for other people's lives in a vehicle, um, you know, high school and, and the drinking that goes along with it. And, and some, for some people, the drugs. And so it's just, it becomes different focuses. It's been so long since my kids were young. It's hard for me to really think back um, on, you know, on, on what we did day to day back then. But I, I mean, you know, are, you, are, are your kids friends? Are, are your son and your daughter friends? Are they close? Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, and, and how did you facilitate that? If well, first they thing are, we did was we had them close in age. My sister and I are four years apart and, you know, we're, we're somewhat close, but we were always moving into the next stage. When I, when she came into high school, I had left high school. When she came into college, I had left college. And so we were not really in the same stage of life together. My, my kids are two years, two months apart. Um, so it's helped to keep them close because they're in the same stage of life together. Um, and so to me that that's helpful. Um, I see some kid parents, they have a kid and, the, and it's six years old and they have another child, you know, it, it, sometimes it's going to be hard for those two kids to really relate because they're in completely different stages of life. Um, when, when I, when I see my kids, sometimes I see my kids, not sometimes every day I see my kids mimicking my behavior and my wife's behavior. So like I can see my kids reacting to each other or behaving the way my wife and I treat each other. It's really interesting. So sometimes, and I've even, it's even changed my behavior towards my wife. So if my wife does something that normally I would have been short with her when the kids weren't around, now I make sure I'm not short with her. And I try to really, really up my game of civility and um, what, what, what suits the situation the best, not right. just what's like me throwing a temper tantrum or getting angry at my wife or whatever, because I want my kids to treat each other like that. And it's actually quite effective. Did you notice that through the years that you would see like your, your, your son and your daughter sort of mimicking the interactions that you and your wife would have? Yeah. So, I mean, I think that the old adage that, you know, they're like sponges and who are they around the most? They're around, you know, their parents. I think I've heard studies that, you know, the most influential uh, people on children are their parents. You know, you can, you can send them off to a good school, you can have them with a good coach, but, but in the end, the studies have shown that parents, because they spend more time with the parents than anybody, have the influence. Um, now, one caveat to that was, and I did this purposely, um, you know, we're in, we're in Shreveport, Louisiana, we're in the South, church is, church is big down here, um, 
as my kids got into middle school and started that those adolescent years, we were in church and Sunday school and those kinds of things, youth group before that, the kids were. But when they started to get into that age group where kids are starting to test the waters, I purposely tried to connect them with their youth leaders a little more because there comes a point when those kids to some degree, your kids stop listening to you because they've been listening to you forever. And if they can connect with a don't, really- Don't tell me that, Jeff. Don't tell <laughs> me that. <laughs> yeah, and it happens when they're like in fifth and sixth grade. You've heard all the stories about middle school, right? Where the, the kids all of a sudden think they know everything. And so if they can connect with that cool coach or that cool youth leader, somebody that you know is a good person is going to teach them good values, the right things, and they think that person hung the moon, then where they're starting to block you out and you sound like the parent on the Peanuts cartoon, you know, this person comes along and, and starts having an influence. And, and, and so I purposely sought that out when my kids got that age and it, and it worked well. Um, mine happened to be youth leaders in, in our church um, that really stepped up and, you know, took an interest in, in, in each of my kids, a, a lady for my daughter and a, and a man for my son. So, um, it, it's something that, you know, and, and if church isn't your thing, I get it. Um, a, a great CrossFit coach or, you know, a, a athletic coach or, uh, you know, some, some person, you know, your kids do jujitsu, a jujitsu coach. But, but I, I would emphasize that they've got to be a good quality person good quality human being because that's that's what you want um them to be soaking up you mentioned spending time with your kids i heard this stat and i'm wondering when you hear it what do you think the stat was that you spend 90 percent of your time with your kid between the day he's born and your kid's 13 years old and then from then until the day you die will just be that you'll only spend 10% of that time with your kids. So to get in as much as you can in the beginning, does, does that resonate with you at all? Does that like, Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. 13, they kind of fly the coop. They do. And then what happens, um, you know, wait till they get a car and then you never see them. Right. So, but that's exactly the age, you know, um, and I'm probably going to fumble this, but you know, 13 is, is when the Jewish, religion, Jewish tradition does the bar mitzvah and, in, in you know, in their history, that's when the child started either effectively became an adult or started to become an adult. And that's, that's what is happening when they turn, you know, 13, they are now a teenager and yeah, their friends are going to, and it, it, it sucks. I mean, I hate to say it for you, but you know, their friends become more important and, and, um, and school gets a little tough. You know, my daughter had a hard time in middle school. The girls got real clicky and they were backbiting each other. And it was, it was a tough first year of middle school, sixth grade. Um, but yeah. And then, and then one of my friends said uh, at one point when his son turned 13 or 14, he's like, he's like, I only have three or four more years till my son's not living in our house anymore. And that, that hits you, man, because when they're 18 and they head off to college, you know, they may be back for some summers, but the way life is now, not all summers, you know, I came home almost every summer when I was in college, but now it's different. Uh, kids are more independent, I think, and they work more um, or they have different opportunities in the summer. So yeah, you're, you know, while you got them at home, enjoy it. <laughs> And the second question, which is really closely tied to that first question, what's the difference between a boy and a girl, is um, what's the difference between a first child and a second child? And you sort of touched on that about being more protective of the first child. But can you kind of go into maybe give some details of things you didn't allow your, your son to do that you allowed your daughter to do? Right. So, um, you know, I just think... I know it's a long time ago. Is your brain just reeling? It's like, wait, yeah, yeah, I'm no, go back I'm 17 years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, you know, it really is, uh, you know, parenting is a crazy thing, right? It, I, there's this, there's a line in, I think it's that Steve Martin parenthood, 
you got to have a license to drive a car. You got to have a license to do this. You have to have that license to catch a fish, but any idiot can have a child, you know? And so all of a sudden you're just giving this child and like, okay, don't mess it up. Um, thankfully, you know, my parents uh, live here. I'm, I came back to where I grew up and I had my parents um, help, you know, uh, but I feel for those folks who have children who don't have any, have parents to, 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 you know, you can get on the phone with them, but still, I mean, to vent to and, and that kind of thing. And so with that first child, it's just like everything. Like I love watching your boys videos and I love what you've done with them because, you know, we, with our first child, we didn't want him to bump his head or skin his knee. I mean, it was probably a little too much, you know, uh, where you let your kids, you know, jump around freely. And if they get hurt, as long as it's not a, a major injury, <laughs> you just let them, work it out you know um you know we did even 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 things like the um w with our first child we had a, a wipe warmer that's a place where you put the wipes and it keeps them warm so mm -hmm. when you change the baby's diaper they don't get a cold wipe and by the time yeah, they have yeah, the second yeah. kid we're like what is this <laughs> yeah. well wait, here's one that popped in my mind we let my son sleep with us until he was way too old and and we learned that lesson with our second one, we never let her sleep with us. And in hindsight, I'm just telling you, if you don't want to go through, uh, with both of our kids, we did not do pacifiers. We had told people, people had told us don't do it because you're giving them these crutches that are going to be impossible to break down the road. Same thing with sleeping with, with the parents. I know we, parents love it, but boy, it, it was hard. We got to the point where my son would have to fall asleep in our bed. Then I would have to physically move him. Um, and if I woke him up, then we have to do it all over again. So with my daughter, we were just like, we're not doing that. Um, you know, we were always, uh, you know, we weren't overly coddling. We let the kids kind of cry it out if they were in, in bed and cry and go to sleep kind of thing. Um, but we learned a lot, I think, with the first child. Um, in hindsight, I wish maybe I had had somebody who wasn't as much of a helicopter to, to kind of give us some feedback on the first child. Um, but, you know, I mean, you look back on it, I think we did a pretty dang good job. Both my kids are, are good kids. We haven't had problems with drugs, alcohol, uh, vehicle problems since they've been teenagers. They both make very good grades. They're both very bright. Uh, they take their education seriously. Uh, my daughter's in honors classes. She's got a 4.3 grade point average. Uh, you know, so, you know, are there things we could have done differently? Yeah. But at the same time, you know, I think we've raised some good human beings and, um, we've been fortunate enough not to have, you know, real major issues. I know this is, this is pretty superficial, but. I noticed with my first child, like I knew when I knew when he got his first tooth and I have pictures of this and I have pictures of that. And I, and I just built so many more memories with that first child. And then with, the, with the twins, they almost get neglected in, in my memory bank because I've already seen Avi traverse all of those steps that were kind of like a miracle to me. And now I sort of have that expectation that the twins will just follow in his step. It's, um, I get both births were extremely memorable to me because, you know, for, for whatever reason, maybe it was just because birth is just that intense and that amazing, or maybe it's because right. the difference between having one versus twins. But ever since then, it's interesting. My, yeah, the, I, I feel like in, in, in a way, not in my, not in my, God, I hate to use this word. I always make fun of my mom for using this word, not in my heart and my soul. They're not different, but in my memory bank, I, I feel like I don't allocate enough RAM for the, uh, for the twins. Do you notice that with your second born? Like they, they like they just don't get as much, um, like yeah. you're not as excited when they start walking. You're like, all right, about yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> Let's go I, to can the bar. Third, so <laughs> I can imagine with a third, see you had two, you had, you got two for one, which I feel for folks like that. Like, okay, let's have a second child. Then all of a sudden, Oh my gosh, <laughs> we're going to have two. You know, now you went from man-to-man -man defense to zone. Uh, but, you know, and 
perfect example. Like I'm sitting in my office right here and I have all these pictures of me and my son and my son when he was little, you know, um, that have just been in my office forever. And there's not near as many um, of my daughter. My, my wife used to take a picture a week of my son propped up in his bed and we've got all these pictures. You can see how he grows. And back then it was, you know, we didn't have smartphones. So it was all, it was all actual photographs and we have them in this box. And when you dig through that box, I mean, it's like 70% pictures of him and 20% pictures of her. And yeah, I definitely feel bad. And she'll say it every now and then she's like, there's no pictures of me in here. You know, and so, so <laughs> I love it. For, for people who have three in a, in sequence, like you had two on the second try, but for someone like that third kid or a fourth kid, I mean, I feel for them because they just get, you know, they have to teach themselves how to cook. They, they got to do their own laundry. You know I mean? They get, they get left out to dry. I think. Even, even their birthdays, Avi's birthday just rolls off my tongue. The twins, if someone asks me their birthday, I, I have to think about it. I mean, yeah, if you have five kids, by the time someone asks you the birthday of your fifth kid, you're like, what fifth kid? I mean, it's yeah. just got to be crazy. But I'll say this. I think studies do show that like those fourth and fifth kids turn out to be pretty resilient because they did have to, not only were they the smallest in the pecking order and they had to, they had to fight for what they wanted with their siblings, but they also had to learn how to be self-sufficient, self-starters, you know, um, I feel and, for these they the, and they get the incredible experience of having an older sibling. Like, like Avi is really, really a, an amazing big brother. It's, it's, it's fascinating to watch. He, he basically, and, and once again, they just mimic the parents. He basically treats the twins the way we treat the twins, you know, 10% uh -huh. of the time he tries to parent them. And, and I'm always impressed by that. Right. Lots of, right. If they fall down, he'll go over and check on them. Hey, what's up? How many years older is he than the twins? Um, I think like two years. Haley, what is he like? Two years and a couple days. Avi, two years and a month older. See, like I yesterday, we were, we were out and the twins fell down. One of the twins fell down and his hands were scraped. And Avi came, stopped skateboarding, came over to him, picked him up off the ground, and held his hands. And he said to him, "Hey, Ari, I have magic hands, <laughs> and they'll That's heal cool. your hands." And he held his hands in his hands, yeah. And then he gave him a kiss and skateboarded off. I was like, yeah. Well, and you see, I just kept I think, my I coffee and watch. Great experience because again, your kids are going to be in the same stage of life together. You know, they'll be in middle school together, they'll be in high school together, they'll be in college together, and so you know, um, I, 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 I just I like when you have siblings that are close in age. I just think it it really helps their relationship. Um, that's just what I've seen. Last, last final thing before we sign off here. Um, you're, and I know you bill by the hour. So <laughs> try to cut this off before we get to a half hour. Um, what, what, what activity would you t suggest parents get their kids in? Like if you were like, hey, you're about to have kids when, you know, take them to music lessons or make sure they get into gymnastics or, you know what, you should read to them every night. What? Actually, not even read to them every night. I mean, outside of your own personal parenting, what activity would you get your kid involved in? Right. So I would say, um, I would say some sort of athletic endeavor. I just think that whether it's golf, tennis, a, a team sport, football, baseball, whatever, uh, jujitsu. I did martial arts. I, I started as a sophomore in high school in Taekwondo and it consumed my life for the next 20 years. Um, I just don't think that there is a substitute for the lessons that kids learn through athletic endeavors. And it can be individual or it can be team. Um, and it could be any athletic endeavor, but the whole concept of self-discipline, pushing myself, uh, integrity, honesty, not cheating, you know, all the things that you learn. And if you're on a team, working with people, dealing with people. And then the other thing, um, we did this with my son, but not as much with my daughter. Um, learning a, a musical instrument, I think, is a, a great uh, thing to have because, again, it teaches them a little bit uh, the love of music and a little bit of culture. But also, I think it's something that they'll enjoy when they're older. Um, I suggested guitar, and my son played guitar, and he still plays some guitar. 
Um, piano is very hard for kids and sometimes it, it drives them crazy. But if you can get to the point where you can play, it's a, it's a great gift to have. Um, yeah. The foreign la- the foreign language, a second language and music seems like a lifetime gift you're giving your kid, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and a foreign language would be, you know, I mean, we, I took a lot of French. I took enough French in school that when I went to, when I went to France, I could get around, you know? Um, but if, if your school is not offering that foreign language, then yeah, foreign language. But I, I just think, and let me say this, in, in today's day and age, something outside of the house. You know, I love how you take your kids outside and they can play outside. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's popular to say right now, but sedentarism amongst kids is horrible. And this whole Zoom class virtual is just making it so much worse. We're just feeding the fire, the fire with these kids. Um, so that's why I think sports are great. That's why I think, you know, um, things that take them out of the house, get them somewhere um, away from a computer screen and uh, away from their phones and, and, and gives them an experience and something they can learn. Um, martial arts, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of martial arts of any kind because of the discipline and the structure. And um, I just, you know, I tell people, when they say my kid's not a, great athlete and I, you know, not traditional athlete that I'm like, put them in martial arts, find a good quality person instructor and put them in that. You, you know, um, I got to wrap up here, but it's funny you say that there's two things I always recommend. And you know, this, that CrossFit level one, everyone should take it. And if for no other reason, you should take it so you can learn about nutrition because the stuff I've learned there, I passed on to my kids and I'll, and they will carry with them their whole life. It's right. so important for your kids to know protein, fat, carbohydrates, and, and, and you can teach your kids all, all of that. They'll learn it through you. If you just go take your CrossFit L1. But the other thing is jujitsu. When I signed my kids up for jujitsu, I was, it was just a, a martial arts that I was into because of the UFC and because my friend is Garth Taylor. So I figured I'll throw him into it. But now that my kids have been doing it a couple of years, if you have a daughter and you're not teaching her jujitsu, it's almost negligent because one of the, the jujitsu is basically just, ma- just killing someone from your back. You're on your back and your legs are up and, and you're in your strongest position. Right. And it's like, it seems like a no brainer to teach all women like, Hey, from here, like, if, if, if a predator thinks he's in his strongest position, he's actually in his weakest position. He's right, going to end right. up with a broken arm or a, a broken neck or something. Yeah. So anyway, that's my two plugs for cross Yeah, jiu-jitsu. jiu-jitsu. When I started jiu-jitsu, the UFC hadn't even started. So jiu-jitsu was not near as, as popular. In fact, Taekwondo was because it was about to get into the Olympics, you know. Um, so, but yeah, jiu-jitsu is a great thing. Um, I took some judo for a while and – and, I, and it's definitely, uh, yeah, you got to know how to protect yourself on the ground. Thank you, Jeff. Absolutely, man. It's so good to good. see you. Good to see you, too. Uh, did you feel like you're the first of an experiment, or did this go smoothly? No, I felt like it went really well, you know? Okay, good. <laughs> Made Thanks. me think back on some things that I uh, hadn't thought about in a long time. But, All right, uh, so I'm tell, me, bug- tell, me, tell me briefly, like, what your, what your plan for this project is. So, so basically I'm not at CrossFit anymore. Right. And so, and I have to create since I, since 2003, when the very first day or 2002 when Macintosh released editing software and a computer you could plug into your car, I bought a car and was living in my car and started editing. And for 20, however many years, 20 years, I've been editing every single day, filming every single day of my life. So, um, that's that's what I have to even though I don't work at CrossFit that's what I'm doing and now I have these three kids and they're my perfect subject matter I can't stop right. filming them you know what I mean right. and so I my goal is is like hey just my whole life I've always done just what I love so hey that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just share um, the parenting knowledge that I'm acquiring and faking and making up along the way and then I'm gonna do a weekly call or maybe even more than weekly call with just people I know and ask them about their kids and advice they have and sort of just build this ultimate, uh, uh, not to sound too grandiose, but this ultimate repository 
um, basically the CrossFit journal, but for parents, you know what I mean? Like, just right. like, Hey, you want to learn about like how to raise your kids, what to feed them, how they should move, what education they should have, what classes they should take. Subscribe to Sevon's Patreon account where 95% of everything is going to be free anyway. Right. And well, and so yeah, I think it'd be so cool because, you know, as people live in different parts of the country and, and have different experiences, every, every, conversation you have is going to be different, you know, and it's going to be interesting to see. And, and sometimes you look at parents and p parents look at other parents and say, the way you're doing it is crazy. I wouldn't do that in a million years, you know, and, and yeah, you know, it, it work. it might work for somebody. It might not work for somebody. So I, it, I think it'll be interesting. And it would it'll also create if you're, if it's online, will create a lot of discussion questions and comments, you know, people, talking and posting about, you know, oh, I wouldn't do that. Or that guy's an idiot or, you know, whatever people defending their um, position, you know? Yep. I, I I'm having a uh, Sherman Merrick, the owner of CrossFit dynasty on this afternoon. And, um, I, I stumbled across his Instagram account and he's really big into finance and uh -huh. he made a post celebrating that he had paid off his house. And I sent him like, Hey, that's awesome. Like what a great feeling. And right. I thought that like, you don't see stuff like that on social media, but I just thought that's br a brilliant post. Right. Like, you know what I mean? It's like spiking the ball in the end zone, but everyone should see that. It's, right. it's, an, it's a, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an important brag that the world to see that you paid off your house. Right. But but then I was digging through his podcast and he was talking about how you shouldn't have separate finances with your wife and me and my wife have separate finances. And so um, I just thought that, and it's always worked for us like that. I've never even thought about doing it the other way. I'm not even, I don't object to it doing it the other way at all. Right. It's just that she got her paycheck. I got my paycheck. She would attack her pile of bills. I'd attack my pile of bills, but I'm going to have them on this afternoon and I can't wait to kind of like hear why he says it should be the other way and hopefully I'll learn and me and my wife can like better whatever we got going. Oh, I, it's absolutely. It's so interesting to hear how people run their lives, you know, and the kids are the same way. So, um, yeah, I think, it, I think it's good. I hope you can, you know, I mean, I know you want to give it away for free. I just hope you can make a living with it, you know, doing, yeah, it may not may not matter to you. <laughs> but no, money it matters. All, money uh, all no, it matters. matters right? I would love I would love to make a living doing it. What's what really important though is that I, I'm just gonna give it a shot for the next six months. You know, yeah. a year, two years, whatever. Right. I'm I um I'm in a good place, I have a great life, kids yeah. are happy, wife still loves me. That's I a got surprise friends like you. In, in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm taking Avi out to the skateboard okay. park and uh, Joseph and Ari. Can't forget them. All right, man. Well, it's great seeing you again, and uh, let's just stay in touch as always. All right, thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Devon. All right, bye. Yep, love you. Bye. Love you.